Hey everyone, I'm back with a tutorial today, uh, albeit a kind of a short one, but I've got a lot more tutorials coming up, like I said in the last video. But uh, let's get on. So, I'm going to show you how to take some footage from a game like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty 4, whatever, um, uh, using a HD capture card running at 60 frames per second, 720p, and I'll show you how to create some uh, slow motion shots. Now, as I said, I do recommend that you have a capture card with a uh, capture frame rate of 60 frames per second, as this is the frame rate which Call of Duty operates at, which will enable you to get the smoothest possible slow motion shot. For example, if you have a HD PVR uh, from how Fudge or however you pronounce those darn things, um, or a Dazzle or something similar to that, you're only capturing at 30 frames per second, so you're not really going to capture all the motion. Uh, although you can still create a um, slow motion shot using these devices, they're not going to be quite as smooth as with a 60 frame per second native capture card, for example the Intensity Blackmagic Pro or Shuttle. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of what we're going to be creating. So you can see here we have a uh, test file, I'll play that for you. So Sniper zooms in slow motion, shot, and that's it. So very, very basic. Um, you can see we've got our slow motion here, and it really extended zoom in, and then it takes the shot and it snaps back to normal motion. And you can of course slowly uh, kind of transition it back to normal time if you wish using uh, time remapping, but I'm going to show you a relatively simple method today. Um, you notice we also got this kind of this uh, interesting looking honeycomb effect that kind of flashes up and then fades out after a couple of seconds once the shot's taken. Um, again, another pretty simple effect which I could show you how to create, but I'm not sure if I have enough time today. Um, I'm going to be dealing with a lot of this kind of stuff in the next upcoming tutorials. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you how basically to make this shot. So let's head back into, uh, well when I say back, I mean let's just head into After Effects. Um, we've got some footage here, we have a uh, QuickTime movie file, um, we have a composition obviously. And we have Red Top Honeycomb, and um, this is just one of my resources which I made in uh, Photoshop. I'll probably put up a resource pack or something like that because a lot of people do seem to be interested in this kind of stuff. Um, but about the composition, there are a few things to note if I open up our settings here. The composition should be the resolution of which you uh, captured your footage at, 720p, that's 1280 by 720 Um Best to lock at that uh, aspect ratio. Um, and of course, in our instance, it is uh, 60 frames per second. Now, when I say 60 frames per second, I, I mean not every single game is going to require a 60 frames per second capture card, as the majority of games run at 30 frames per second. So in these instances, uh, a HD PVR or uh, your Dazzle, that'll work just fine. Um, just for Call of Duty, it's recommended that you match the app with frame per second. Um, so, yep, uh, also uh, no 1080i footage if you can avoid it because we have to work on some de interlacing on that and that gets kind of messy. Um, so, progressive all the way. Um, that works on so many levels. Anyway, uh, click OK here. And uh, we're going to bring in our uh, QuickTime footage. Let me stick it down there. And we're going to find out exactly where we need to cut out in this footage. So. Let's continue. Oh, I'm really horrible with the sniper, by the way. It took me like 10 hours to get the shot. I exaggerate, but it was not easy. Um, yeah, you can you can disparage me all you like. Go on with your pointy, pointy words. Uh, so let's find this one in a million shot, which I managed to get somewhere down here. And it was by a guy who was uh, AFK, too. So, yeah, that's really noobish, isn't it? Um, here we go. Okay, let's find out where should we start this out. Let's start it around here, right? So we'll hit uh, Edit, Split Layer. You see we've got our key command, Shift Command D to split it manually. And um, we will head down to where the animation completes, around there. Uh, wait for it to turn. Yep, stop that there. And we will split layer. And we'll delete the uh, two splits. And just drag that to the beginning of our timeline. Very good. So now you can see we've, we've got just the footage which we uh, cut out here, and we can begin working on this. Now what we're using today is a method called pixel motion. Uh, you've probably heard of this one. 
It's one of the more popular methods of achieving uh, slow motion. Now it does cause some artifacting depending on just how much you time extend your footage. Um, which is why of course you'd want 60 frames per second because then you've got more frames per second to uh, mess with. Um, and you reduce the artifacting overall for um, slower shots. Um, so also uh, one thing I should, I should mention here. Um, Pixel motion kind of makes a mess of sudden frame transitions. So, like, let's say if we go up here to the transition between the uh, lens zoom in thing and the actual still sniper aiming thing, right? Um, when we uh, pixel motion this, it's not going to come out too well. It will somewhat mess up. So, what we're going to do is we'll find the point here at which we get the transition, go to the last frame before the transition. If I can find my timeline controls, they've kind of disappeared because of the low resolution. Uh, there we go. Okay, hello. There it is. Um, we'll start that frame there. So right now we're on the frame immediately before it transitions, so we'll hit edit. Oops. And split layer. There we go. We've got the split layer there. And now we're going to make it kind of more concise, more interesting looking. So. You'll see here we take the shot there and uh, you see the bullet hit the enemy and then the camera kind of pans up a little because the uh, the recoil that's not exactly conducive to interesting looking video so what we'll do here is because it has a default snapback to regular perspective we can actually cut out anything before anything after that sudden pan so let's find where the bullet hits we're out there and then we can split this layer again okay um, and we'll just figure out where our transitions back now there we go find the last frame we'll split it again okay edit split layer and now in here we have uh, the section of the uh, recoil so we'll select that hit delete and we'll just match our uh, snap back up with the previous layer so now you see um, all that happens now is um, we get the shot and we pull back again to see the enemy dying um, kind of a roundabout explanation but you can see what's happening down here we've got the aiming and we've got the transition to the sniping mode we get the shot there we go and then we suddenly snap back to see the enemy dying so it's very fluid, um, but I'm um, yabbering on a bit, so let's let's get on with it. Um, now we're going to add in our slow motion. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to find out the exact moment where our um, slow motion should begin. That will be precisely when we begin to lift the sniper. So let's skip ahead a bit there. There, that's where it begins. So we'll go one frame back, click the layer, then split layer okay so now we have one wonderful little section here which we can apply our interesting looking motiony stuff to so we'll grab the top layer here that's the zoom out and walk away layer and then um, this layer here which is the, our actual sniper position layer and we'll pull us along the timeline a few seconds ahead just to make enough space and then we'll click the um, aiming layer right click to go to time, time stretch, and uh, we'll set our stretch factor to let's say about 600. Remember to watch how much you stretch it by if you're only operating at 30 frames per second. If you are going at 30 frames per second, maybe only go to about 400 or so, 300 to be safe. Um, it may not be incredibly slow, but it will be slow. Click OK. And now we can just grab the uh, two layers there and realign them. Okay, very good and um, you can see it's going to be kind of um, kind of jumpy until we uh, apply the pixel motion so click the layer and we will click the uh, pixel motion frame blending there enable frame blending and uh, we can see here we've, we've got our frame blending enabled here so uh, this needs to be enabled for anything we do down here to take effect just bear that in mind now if we uh, go ahead and RAM preview this you can see we've got nice low motion zoom in and our quick shot. Um, now we have enough time so I'll show you how to add in that interesting looking red haze kind of effect 
So let's go up here, grab our red top honeycomb effect layer. I'll probably attach this image to the video for you just to make things easier. As per usual, if you do use my uh, self-made resources, please don't plagiarize them. Um, so we'll just stick that in there. Um, now this is this could be better. Yeah, actually it could be way better because it's blocking out our image. Um, right click, we'll go blending mode, add. Um, okay, reasonable. Um, it'll do. Um, so we'll just head into our drop down menu, transform. We'll drop the opacity down quite a bit. Hmm. We'll, we'll put it down to zero for now. So what we're gonna do here is we'll find the exact point where our um, shot takes place and where the pullback layer begins, which is right there. So we'll go one frame ahead and now we're on to um, the pullback layer. So here what we'll do, we will set a keyframe for the opacity here for the um, for the uh, red honeycomb layer. Then we'll skip ahead a tiny bit here and we will increase the opacity to something cool looking maybe around there. Nothing too obvious now. It looks about right. We can adjust the uh, blending option later but that looks pretty cool. Um, and let me put it around 30 or so and we can skip ahead to around there and we will set the opacity down to zero so our simple keyframes here opacity increases when we take the shot then slowly fades out now you could add like a, a kind of a red glow effect to the top of the image to give it a more impressive kind of look optic predators kind of thing um but i'm not that obsessed with things being really glowy and red all the time. Um, I, I might show you how to make a targeter later, but let's continue with the matter at hand. So we uh, play the whole thing, and we'll see what happens. Get a slow shot. And um, yeah, so that's looking pretty cool, I think. We've got the slow motion zoom in, snap back. Once the shot takes place, we've got this kind of grill that shows up and then fades out. There we go, that's our um, video shot completed. You can now go ahead and uh, composition, add to render queue, and post it up online for people to enjoy. So as usual, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe if you found this useful, and I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper.